This is George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias, and this is for Math 21, Section 10.2, where we'll cover the one proportion test and its binomial alternative test. There are five steps for performing a one proportion test. First, state the hypotheses. Second, choose a level of significance. Third, state the test you're performing, as long as we know it meets the right conditions. Step four, compute the test statistic and the p-value. And finally, step five, make a decision about HO, we'll talk about that in a moment, and a conclusion about H1, we'll talk about that as well. Let's go back to the beginning. The first step where we state the hypotheses, there are two hypotheses to state. The first is the null hypothesis written H sub zero. This is always gonna be of the form P is equal to some number that's given in the problem. There's a second hypothesis called the alternative hypothesis, and that's written as h sub one. That will compare p to the same number, but it will use one of these three signs, less than, greater than, or not equal to. The wording in the claim will help you to figure out which sign to use for h one. The null hypothesis, h sub zero, is the one that we always assume to be true. And we're going to try to prove that H sub one is true. Um, H sub zero is like the condition in a jury trial where we assume that the defendant is innocent. And then we try to gather enough evidence to show that that can't be true. And we accept the alternative hypothesis H sub one, the defendant is guilty. Step two, choose a level of significance. The level of significance we denote with the Greek letter alpha, and that's the benchmark between what is enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis and what is not enough evidence. The more important the hypothesis test is, the lower the level of significance should be. If you could be sued, if somebody could be hurt or worse, you wanna think about a very low level of significance. If it's not that important, you can raise the level of significance. For the problems that we're working on, we'll simply read the level of significance directly from the problem. By the way, the one most typically used is alpha equals 0 0.05. Step three, state the test you're performing. At this point, we only know one test and it's the one proportion test. And so we just write that in step three. We use this test whenever we're comparing the proportion of a single population to a particular number, which is usually a percentage. The sample data will have this form, x out of n, this many out of that many. We call that sample data again, the sample proportion p hat. p hat is equal to x divided by n. Now the data for this type of test will be qualitative or categorical in nature. Think about what question you would ask to gather the data and think about what your answers to that kind of question would be. If you're expecting to hear categories, you're working with a proportion style test. There are two conditions, just like with confidence intervals for proportions to check before we begin. The first one notice is a little different than what we've seen before. Instead of P hat, we're gonna use P sub zero. This number comes from the null hypothesis. We'll also make sure that the sample size is no more than 5% of the population size by making sure that this inequality is true. Multiply the sample size by 20, and if the population size we feel is going to be larger than that, then we can assume that condition has been met. Step four, compute the test statistic and the p-value. We're gonna compute both of these using stat crunch in one step, the directions listed here. Stat, proportion stats, one sample with summary. On the first screen, just like with confidence intervals, we'll enter the number of successes x and the number of observations n. We'll then enter the value from the null hypothesis and we'll reset the sign for the alternative hypothesis. The test statistic that we're computing is a formula for determining how many standard errors, or you can think of this as standard deviations, 
the sample proportion p hat is from the claimed population proportion, p sub zero. This is the formula that we use. In the numerator, it finds out how far apart they are, and then it divides by this square root. And again, that gives a standard error, or what you can think of as the standard deviation for this distribution. Remember that the more standard deviations away, the more unlikely that event is to occur. The p-value is the probability or chance of obtaining a sample proportion as extreme as or more extreme than the one that we found in our sample if the null hypothesis was true. The idea is that a low p-value indicates that it's unlikely to get this sample if the null hypothesis was true. And so what we do then is throw out our assumption that it was true. There are two parts to step five. The first is the decision about the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than that level of significance alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. And that means that we have enough evidence to support that H1 is true. However, if the p-value is not lower than alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And that means we don't have enough evidence to support H1. So, uh, the ideas that you want to get straight here are that a low p-value leads to us rejecting the null hypothesis, which leads to us supporting the alternative hypothesis H1. But if we have a high p-value, and by a high p-value, all I really mean is anything that's not lower than alpha, then that means that we fail to reject HO. And that also means there is not enough evidence to support H1. On the next few screens, we're gonna work through a few examples of this test, and I'll keep referring back to these steps. It will take a little while for these to sink in, but these are the only problems we're doing the rest of the semester. And so you will start to gain a conceptual understanding as we go. Here's our first example. In December 2001, 38% of adults with children under the age of 18 reported that their family ate dinner together seven nights a week. In a recent poll, 403 of 1,122 adults with children under the age of 18, reported that their family ate dinner together seven nights a week. Tests the claim that the proportion of families with children under the age of 18 who eat dinner together seven nights a week decreased since December 2001. Use the alpha equals 0.05 level of significance. Okay, we have a one proportion test here because we're comparing the proportion of families that eat dinner together seven nights a week to a percent. 38% was the number in 2001. So the null hypothesis is P equals 0.38. Now for the alternative hypothesis, we're gonna compare P to 0.38 as well. Which sign belongs in there? We're going to use the less than sign because we're testing if it has decreased or if it's less than that value. The level of significance is given in the problem, alpha equals 0.05. Now this appears again to be a one proportion test, but we do have to check the conditions. The first condition, and I'll do this off to the side, is that 20 times the sample size can be no more than the population size. 20 times 1,122 is 22,440. And that is adults with children under the age of 18. And we know that there are more than that in this country, so that condition is met. Next, we have to make sure that n times p sub zero times one minus p sub zero is greater than or equal to 10. n is the sample size, that's 1,122. p sub zero comes from the null hypothesis, that's 0.38. One minus that is 0.62. And when we multiply that out, we get 264.343. In my lab, they're going to ask you for that, usually to three decimal places. That's why I rounded it there. Okay, for the calculations, let's go to StatCrunch. 
we're going to keep in mind that the sample proportion is 403 out of 1,122. And we need to keep in mind also that the sign for H1 is less than, and the value in the null hypothesis is 0.38. Let's go to StatCrunch. We'll begin by pressing the stat key, then proportion stats, one sample with summary. The number of successes was 403. The number of observations, 1,122. In the null hypothesis, we had P equals 0.38, and the sign for the alternative was less than. Press compute. Our test statistic is listed under Z stat, that's negative 1.44, and the p-value is 0 0.0754. Okay, the test statistic was Z equals negative 1.44, and that had a p-value of 0 0.0754. When it's time to make our decision, we compare that p-value to the level of significance given in problem in step two, and it's not less than 0 0.05, so that means we failed to reject the null hypothesis. And when we fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means that there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that H1 is true. In other words here, that the proportion that eat together has decreased or is less than 38%. Here's a second example. A magazine claimed that 50% of college students are male. A recent survey of college students revealed that 344 of 800 college students were male. Test the magazine's claim at the alpha equals 0.05 level of significance. This is a one proportion test because we're comparing the proportion of college students who are male to a percent, 50%. Also notice that we have one sample of qualitative data, 344 out of 800 were male. Think about the question you would ask. You'd ask the person what their gender was and their response would be a category. The null hypothesis will compare P to 50% or 0 0.50. And the null hypothesis is always of the form P is equal to that number. For the alternative, we're also comparing P to that same number. What sign is indicated in the example? Well, there's no indication that it's higher than 50% or lower than 50%, just that it is 50%. And if there's no indication of higher or lower, the alternative hypothesis uses not equal to. The level of significance is given in the problem as 0.05, and the test appears to be a one proportion test as long as the conditions are met. Let's check those conditions. First, 20 times n cannot be bigger than the population size. Here, 20 times 800 is 16,000 college students. And the question is, are there more than 16,000 college students? Since it doesn't even mention one particular college, just college students in general, there are definitely more than 16,000 college students. Next, to check n times p sub zero times one minus p sub zero, that has to be greater than or equal to 10. And the sample size is 800. p sub zero comes from the null hypothesis, 0.5. One minus that is also 0.5. And when we multiply that, we get 200, which is definitely larger than 10. So the conditions are met. We can go to StatCrunch for the calculations. The sample proportion was 344x out of 800n. And the null hypothesis, we have p is equal to 0.5 versus not equal to. So we'll enter all of that in StatCrunch to generate our test statistic and p-value. We'll begin by pressing stat, proportion stats, one sample with summary. The number of successes was 344. The number of observations was 800. The null hypothesis was P equals 0.5, so I'll leave that alone. 
The sign in the alternative was not equal to. I'll leave that alone as well. Press compute. And there are the results. The test statistic Z stat is negative 3.96 with a p-value that's less than 0 0.0001. Okay, we found that Z was equal to negative 3.96. And the p-value is listed as less than 0 0.0001. That's StatCrunch's way of saying it's really small. You can think of it as essentially zero. It means you get a sample like this less than one out of every 10,000 attempts. Since the p-value is so small, here it's less than 0.05. That means that we reject the null hypothesis. And when we reject the null hypothesis, that means that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that H1 is true. In other words, that, what does H1 say? The proportion of all college students who are male is not 50%. Now, where does that wording come from? Here, their claim is that it is 50%, but the alternative hypothesis is what we're making our conclusion about. And not equal to means that it is not equal to or simply not 50%. Here's a third example of the one proportion test. A researcher claims that more than 10% of adults are left-handed. This suggests it's going to be a one proportion test because we're comparing the proportion of a population that has a certain characteristic being left-handed to a certain percentage, 10%. The other thing we're looking for in a one proportion test is a sample of this many out of that many for qualitative data. Here we have 30 out of 250 adults that are left-handed. The null hypothesis is always of the form P is equal to, what should P be equal to this time? 10% are left-handed, P equals 0.10. The alternative hypothesis, H sub 1, will also compare P to 0 0.10. What sign should we use here? Since the claim is that more than 10% are left-handed, we'll use P is greater than 0 0.10. We're told to use the 0.05 level of significance, so alpha equals 0 0.05 is step 2. The test appears to be one proportion. Again, we have to check to make sure that the conditions aren't met. The first condition, 20 times n is less than or equal to the population size. 20 times 250 equals 5,000 adults. The question is, are there more than 5,000 adults? You bet. That condition is met. Next, n times p sub 0 times 1 minus p sub 0 has to be greater than or equal to 10. n is the sample size. That is 250. P sub 0 comes from the null hypothesis. That's 0.10. And 1 minus 0 0.10 is 0 0.90. When we multiply that out, we get 22.5, which is definitely greater than or equal to 10. The conditions are satisfied. Now, if the conditions are not satisfied, there's another test that we can turn to involving the binomial distribution. We'll look at that in just a moment. Let's go to StatCrunch. The sample proportion we need, that is 10, I'm sorry, that is 30 out of 250. And take note of the null hypothesis, P equals 0 0.10, and the sign for the alternative hypothesis, greater than. Let's go to StatCrunch. Again, press Stat, Proportion Stats, one sample with summary. The number of successes was 30, the number of observations 250, and the null hypothesis P was equal to 0.1 or 0.10, and the alternative was P was greater than 0.10. So reset the sign, press compute. Here are the results. The Z stat is our test statistic 1.05, the P value 0.1459. Okay, we found that Z was equal to 1.05 for the test statistic, and the p-value was 0.1459. Now, when we compare that to the level of significance, it's not less than 
That means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And when we fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means that there is not enough evidence to conclude that H sub one is true. In this problem, that means there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that more than 10% of all adults are left-handed. Okay, let's see what happens when the conditions are not satisfied. Now, if any of the conditions for this one proportion test fail, we can still perform the test by using the binomial distribution to compute the p-value. The conditions are listed to the right. The first was n times p sub zero times one minus p sub zero, where p sub zero comes from the null hypothesis. That product has to be greater than or equal to 10. Also, the sample size can't be more than 5% of the population size. If either condition fails, we're gonna to switch to this alternative test. There are only two steps that get changed. In step three, we'll add on binomial to the name of the test, one proportion binomial. In step four, there's not going to be a test statistic that we'll write. Instead, we'll compute the p-value using the steps shown below with the binomial calculator in StatCrunch. Now the test statistic technically is the number of successes. We're just not going to write that. To compute the p-value using the binomial distribution, we'll open the binomial calculator in StatCrunch. In the top row, we'll fill in the sample size for n and the value of p sub zero from the null hypothesis that will go in for p. Next, we have to pick the right sign to use and the value for x that we're going to enter is the number of successes from the sample. If h sub one involves the symbol less than, then what we have is a left tail test. We're looking for something significantly lower than we would expect if h o was true. In StatCrunch, we'll use the less than or equal to sign when h sub one is a less than sign. Notice that we're adding on an equal sign there because we're trying to find the probability that we find a sample this extreme equal to or more extreme, that's where the less than comes in. If h sub one involves the sign greater than, then you have a right tailed test and we'll use greater than or equal to for the number of successes. Now, if the alternative hypothesis is not equal to, this is a little more challenging. There are two tails that we have to work with in this case. However, we're going to compute the p-value for one of the tails and then double that. So if your sample proportions lower than what we expected, then we'll find the left tail p-value using the less than or equal to sign, and we'll double that. Otherwise, we'll double the right tail p-value. Now, if you make a mistake and you select the wrong tail, when you double it, that result is going to be greater than one and a p-value is a probability. It cannot be greater than one. That means that you've used the wrong tail. Just switch to the other tail. Example four, a counselor claims that more than 30% of college students have divorced parents. A random sample of 40 college students revealed that 18 had divorced parents. At the 0.01 level of significance, test the counselor's claim. Before I check the conditions, I'm going to go ahead and write the null and alternative hypotheses. Remember, the null hypothesis is of the form P equals, and here we're using 30%, so P equals 0.3 or 0.30. For the alternative hypothesis, we're going to compare P to 0 0.30, and we need to come up with the right sign. The counselor claims that more than 30% have divorced parents. That's going to be P is greater than 0.30. Now that I've written that value down, I can check the conditions. Remember that's N times P sub zero times one minus P sub zero. We're looking to see if that is greater than or equal to 10. N is 40. P sub zero, we've written down, that's 0 0.30 right there. And one minus 0 0.30 is 0 0.70. When I multiply that out, I get 8.4, which is not greater than or equal to 10. The conditions fail. This is not a one proportion test, but instead is going to be a one proportion binomial test.
Notice I don't have to check the other condition. Once one of them fails, there's no sense in checking anymore. The level of significance in step two, alpha is 0 0.01. That's given in the problem. Uh, step three, the name of the test, as I mentioned, this is one proportion binomial. Now we need to compute the p-value in StatCrunch. The value of n is our sample size. That is 40. The value of p comes from the null hypothesis. That's 0 0.30. And we're going to be looking for x to be greater than or equal to 18. Greater than or equal to because this is a right-tailed test. h sub 1 is greater than 18 because there were 18 students that had divorced parents. Okay, let's go to StatCrunch. We'll start by opening up the binomial calculator, stat, calculators, binomial. The value of n was the sample size, 40. The value of p comes from the null hypothesis, 0.3 or 0 0.30. And we're looking for x to be greater than or equal to the number in the sample, which was 18. Press compute, and our p-value shows up in the right-hand box, 0 0.0320, rounded to four places. All right, we found that the p-value is 0 0.0320. We compare that to the level of significance, 0 0.01. It's not less than 0 0.01, so we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis, and that means that there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that H1 is true. In other words, that more than 30% of all college students have divorced parents. Example five, a college claims that more than 90% of its students use its tutorial services. A random sample of 105 students showed that 99 of them use the tutorial services. Test the college's claim at the 0.05 level of significance. Okay, this looks like a one proportion test. We're comparing the proportion of students who use tutorial services to a percentage, 90%. The null hypothesis then is that P is equal to 0.9 or 9.0. And the alternative, H sub 1, will also compare P to 0.9 or 0.90. The correct sign to use here is greater than because the claim is that more than 90% use them. The level of significance given in the problem as 0 0.05. So step two, alpha equals 0 0.05. Now before we write the name of the test, we do have to check the conditions. We'll start with n times p sub zero times one minus p sub zero to see whether that is indeed greater than or equal to 10. N is the sample size, 105, a sample of 105 students. P sub zero comes from the null hypothesis, that's 0.9. One minus that is 0.1. And now we multiply 105 by 0.9 by 0.1, and that equals 9.45. That is not greater than or equal to 10, the conditions for the one proportion test fail, and so we're going to perform the one proportion binomial test. For the calculations in StatCrunch, we need to know n, which is 105. We need to know p, which is 0.9 or 9.0. And we're going to be looking for x to be greater than or equal to 99. Greater than or equal to because our alternative hypothesis involved the greater than sign. 99 because 99 of the students use the tutorial services. Let's go to StatCrunch. Again, we'll start by opening the binomial calculator. Stat, calculators, binomial. The value of n is our sample size, 105. The value of p comes from the null hypothesis, 0.9 or 0.90. And we were looking for x to be greater than or equal to the number of successes in the sample, which was 99. Press compute. And there's our p-value, 0.0899, rounded to four decimal places.
we found that the p-value was 0 0.0899. That is not lower than the level of significance 0 0.05. So we're going to fail to reject HO, the null hypothesis. That means that there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that H1 is true. In other words, that more than 90% of all students use the tutorial services.